Hi, and welcome to The Language Lie. A podcast about idioms. I'm Ingrid. I'm Casey. How are you, Casey? (laughs) Constant question. How's it going, Casey? It's great. We're recording during the day, and let me tell you, I look different on camera without the cover of darkness. No one Uh, knows that you can also see... Casey has a face that's outside (laughs) during the day. It's less cute than the one when it's completely dark. So (laughs) your face looks better if it's not in the pitch black. Yes. Cool. Well, Texas is the place for you. We keep losing our electricity. So yeah, just make that work for you. Cool. Uh, Are you excited to hear about an idiom today, Casey? Yes. Pause noted. Long yes. pause noted. Great. So glad you showed up anyway, despite Thank you. perhaps not having enthusiasm. The idiom is key. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I'm the excited one. Casey comes along for the ride. It's the idiom I chose to research today is one from that we've had on our list for a long time, and I'm kind of shocked we haven't done. The cat's out of the bag. Interesting. Okay. We haven't done this one. I'm we just kidding. haven't. <laughs> this is actually <laughs> pretty one of sure my... this is episode forty-four. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we did. Uh, Curiosity killed the cat. Curiosity killed the cat. Cats and dog. It's raining cats and dogs. There's a lot of cat-related idioms. And remember, there were like 174 horse-related idioms, or yeah. something along those lines. Like yeah. so many animals. Um, animals, man. Yeah, they've been around for a while. Apparently. All right. Do you know what you think the cats out of the bag means? Cats out of the bag means that the information is out there. Um, The surprise has been unsurprised. Uh, (laughs) I was equating new words, unsurprised. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unsurprisingly is a word. Um, There's also another idiom that we could use to describe this idiom, which is the horses out of the stable. That's an Um, idiom? I've never heard that in my life. I heard it recently, yeah. So it's like something, you know, you can't put back. Um, Where did you hear this thing about horses? I have another idiom podcast (laughs) that you all know about. It's called The Language Truth. Uh, (laughs) The horses out of the stable, all right? Something along those lines, yeah. Tune in next week. That could be like a slightly wrong thing but essentially uh you know once once the information's out there it's out there so whether that be the unsurprising of something or a data breach or whatever else (laughs) wow it's a very that's a very 10 minute (laughs) definition sorry i know we're trying to keep it short here my bad no i liked it uh you're absolutely correct the cambridge dictionary defines this as to allow a secret to be known, usually without intending to. I think that's the part that you didn't touch mm. on, that the unintention, unintentionality, which is also an unsurprise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you have any guesses about where this might come from, Casey? No. I, I want to know why the cat was in the bag in the first place. Me too. Um but I really don't I have no clue where. I have never met a cat who would get in a bag, willingly at least. They might get in there if you didn't want them to. Mm. I had an uncle who was a cat. Had a gym bag that my grandmother or my aunt's very mean cat, very mean cat. Uh, climbed into Jinx was the cat's Mm -hmm. name climbed into the bag my uncle didn't know took the gym bag threw it in the back of his trunk ran a bunch of errands went to the bar (gasps) uh came back and I guess he didn't need the bag and he like was like swinging the bag around whatever because he's probably oh my god and then he got home and he opened the bag and let's just say the cat came out of the bag very (gasps) aggressively oh my god I mean to be fair that cat was mean before this what happened did your uncle die i think jinx scratched the crap out of my uncle mike which to be fair he 
deserves it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. The cat so was we, out of the bag. We did not plan this beforehand. I had no idea Casey had an amazing family story about cats and bags. You kind of started that and you were like, my uncle and my grandma. And I was like, oh man. Yeah. We're, wow. Then was... they started the YouTube. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> That was quite a ride. Casey, thanks yeah. for that. So we're done for the week. That was the story about the cat. Bye, guys. See ya. Wow. Okay. So you think that it came from your uncle and no, Jinx? I have no cat. idea. Okay. So <laughs> I, uh, like most idioms, I like to research. We don't really know where this came from, mm. but... It was, a, those. it was fun when I was researching it. So I started on Wikipedia and most of, but this is just Wikipedia and one other source, but I started on Wikipedia. The, they say that the derivation of this is not clear. One suggestion is that it refers to a whip-like cat of nine tails, an instrument of punishment that was once used on Royal Navy vessels. And they say that that was purportedly stored in a red sack. And if a sailor, a sailor who revealed the transgressions of a different sailor would be letting that cat out of the bag, I guess, because the other sailor would be punished with this cat of nine tails. This is real dark. Oh, okay. Also, they use a cat of nine tails for punishment. Punishment on a ship. I don't really know what a cat of nine tails is, but I am guess I should go find out. Don't Google that. Cool. I won't. Now I don't I I know why I shouldn't. Um another they say another derivation is from a pig in a poke scam <laughs> where a customer would um buy be buying a pig in a sack and would be sold a less valuable cat and wouldn't realize the deception until the bag was open. Uh they say that there was Yo Johannes Agricola made a reference to this in a letter to Martin Luther on the 4th of May, 1530 as referenced in a 2016 wow. biography. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very old. Yeah, very old. I would like to say that Snopes.com uh, says that this is all false. They reference this in the Wikipedia entry as well. Oh. They say that- So you just lied to me. <laughs> no, I- I was I, like, oh my gosh, the most historical idiom we've ever done. Wrong. <laughs> I, well, it was referenced in 1530, so the historical oh. nature of it is, uh, they oh, don't say that that okay, part is untrue, but oh, that got it, got it. the origins are. Oh, okay, okay. Snope says that although numerous etymology books tout the explanation as the phrase's origins, common sense should serve to dismiss it. For a duped livestock purchaser theory to be right, the seller's deception would come to light only when the cat was let out of the bag. Bag or not, it is nigh on impossible to mistake a cat for a pig. But I just want to know where Snopes gets off arguing with numerous etymology books. Like, what, how, how the veracity of Snopes is more than numerous etymology books. And we could get into an argument about the veracity of the internet here. And I would like to. So no, we do not have time for that. We, We're trying to let's, minimize let's, these episodes. Listen to our nine hour episode about that. But I'm going somewhere fun with this. So. I, because I was like, huh, why would, why would one of these things be more right than the other? I decided to ask an actual book, mm -hmm. our trusty hog on ice uh -huh. and which predates the internet in good old 1948 as it's um, copyright. And I think Martin Luther references this book. Hog on ice. Yeah. Yes. Martin Luther talked a lot about hog on ice. We we mentioned hog on ice and actually did a whole episode. Casey researched the idiom hog on ice. You guys can go back and listen to that one long ago. It's a great book. Talks about a lot of different idioms. So he says, if all truth were known, our ancestors probably knew and practiced more sales tricks than the slyest and most unscrupulous merchants ever heard of today. Elsewhere, it's told one reason why a person was warned not to buy a pig in a poke. Um, the one might not even get a piglet, the wriggling contents of the bag. So like a lively pig might be a cat. So uh, they say that once a literal statement, we use the expression nowadays with the meaning to disclose something that has been kept a secret. A secret. Literary use of the saying is not very old, he says, going back only about 200 years. 
but in common speech, it is likely that usage antedates that by another 200 years at least. Oh, okay, so he is agreeing with this. The literary use is only 200 years, but in common speech, perhaps Martin Luther goes 200 years further back. So that's where we are with it. We're not really sure. A lot of places. What, what was the year that? Sorry, what was the year that Martin Luther re referenced it? Fifteen thirty. Okay. Okay. <laughs> A lot of places online said that it's just the idiom. I mean, was that it, it's what it sounds like? You let a cat out of a bag. So it's not even quite idiomatic, like something. I mean, it is, but they're saying that it doesn't have to have an origin. It's just that this is an idiom because it, it is what it sounds like. They're saying it is what it is. It is what it is. They're basically saying it. You know, it is what it is. Okay. Oh, which is one of my least favorite things to say ever. Uh, so people, it is what it is. No, it's two, not. Two questions. Two questions. Cool. Here. I love a follow-up. Okay. <clears throat> I'm glad they're not from someone else. Yes. Uh, I have a member in the audience. Uh, now, why would someone buy pigs in a bag? That is a great question, Casey. I don't like, purchase was there a livestock. Time, people? <laughs> Sorry, was there a time period when like animals were sold in bags? Why would you ever buy something in a bag? This is a very good point. And a lot of things online said, you know, like no one's ever going to mistake a pig for a cat, a cat for yeah, a pig. Like, there's like claws why would, coming out of the bag. <laughs> why would either thing be in a bag? Yeah. Also, how did your uncle get that far? Because now that I'm thinking about a cat in a bag, like the fact that he's swinging this bag around and there's a cat in there that's probably clawed through the bag is what I think would have happened at that point. Okay, question number two, Casey. Nope. Cool. Just one question then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, uh, so in researching this, I'd like to let you, I'd, I'd like to let you know that I did find by happenstance our international idioms for the day. I'm going to send those over to you right now, Casey. I am so ready. I'm cat. <laughs> no, really. I'm cat in <laughs> de Zakoben. That's good. That's Dutch, if you can't tell. And in German, dein Katze, I'm Sack Kaufen. So your German accent and your Dutch accent sound very similar, Casey. I don't know the difference between the two languages. They're both <laughs> Germanic, right? Yeah. All right. So I right. don't know. Somebody tell me why I'm wrong about Dutch. Um, no, I think Dutch is very, like, more mouthy. Cool. German's good or roll. You're like, Dutch like is more I feel like Dutch, all the sound happens in the mouth. I it's, mean, he's I violently wrong. pointing at his, at his Shaking mouth. Shaking my face. Right? Yes. <laughs> no. So wait, well, what does this mean? I feel like even with your interesting pronunciation. I'm of cat. <laughs> <laughs> is in sein bag no more so these are the these are the same things this idiom exists in several different languages those both loosely translate to buy a cat in a bag that is to buy false goods so that's like a different meaning that's a different meaning yeah you're correct hmm. so interesting Crazy. i love this about idioms sometimes you say kind of the same thing and it means something else words mean different things in different languages people who to thank yeah <laughs> cool well thank you that was yeah very insightful well um, uh if if next time could we not do a cat idiom i am allergic yeah so you're feeling a little sneezy your histamine mm -hmm. right now i've been throwing i've been throwing a lot of cat idioms at you i am also allergic so it's been a rough day over here yeah researching cats and trying to keep my head above water so you're doing you... great i'm sorry <laughs> i felt like i should have said something there you're doing great oh thanks it's okay you don't have to flatter me 
If you'd like us to research a non-histamine related idiom for Casey, you can email us at thelanguagelie at gmail.com. Or slide into our DMs on Instagram, Twitter, Stitch, <laughs> MySpace. You'll come to go Bank to our MySpace <laughs> at the language lie all one word we definitely check it so we'll talk to you soon we're very responsive absolutely i should go check that right now okay thanks guys talk to you next week bye y'all